And one of the things that, that marks religion in the Ozarks, especially when you're talking about Protestant religion, and, and as we can see, the vast majority of people who lived in the Ozarks up until the Civil War were Protestants, and, and still today, uh, a majority of people who live in the Ozarks are, are Protestant, uh, was that they tended to be from what we might call the people's churches, or what you might call the common churches. You saw very few Episcopalians in the Ozarks. You saw very few uh, old school Presbyterians in the Ozarks. The churches that tended to have traditions where their ministers went to college and the churches that uh, often were made up of uh, the wealthier people in a community when you did see Episcopal churches or old school Presbyterian churches, they were almost always in town somewhere. They were rarely out in the countryside. They would be in Springfield or in one of the bigger towns of the Ozarks and often made up of merchants and lawyers and doctors and your better off farmers and things like that. Uh, but most of the, the vast majority of people in the Ozarks, being common people, belong to some of these common churches. And it goes back to where these people came from. If you remember earlier in the semester, we talked about the migration patterns and we talked about people migrating here from Tennessee and Kentucky and even farther back east in, the, in that kind of southern upland area. And if you go back to the early 1800s, when the migrations first <clears throat> start of, of white people coming to the Ozarks, that's the very age when you're having all of these great revivals in places like Tennessee and Kentucky. And the churches that are really benefiting from these revivals, from what in religious history we call the Second Great Awakening, from this widespread revival out in the, in the Southwest, are the Methodists and the Baptists especially, the Cumberland Presbyterians, the Christians. These are, those are the groups that are growing by leaps and bounds, by getting people... Uh, coming to these large camp meetings, we'll, uh, we'll hear a description of an early uh, Missouri camp meeting in the minute. And this was, uh, this was all part of what was going on for these people who were, who were migrating to Missouri and Arkansas. And it's no surprise that they bring these religious movements with them. And often when they get to Missouri and Arkansas, they're recreating these camp meetings and this revival spirit and growing, especially the Baptist and the Methodist, we'll talk about uh, both, uh, we'll hear from both the Baptist and Methodist ministers in the early days of Missouri before the Civil War. Uh, but that's, that's in large part why Missouri develops religiously the way it does. It's the people who come here bring their religious beliefs with them, just as the Germans who came here in the 1840s and 50s brought their religious beliefs with them, whether that was Catholicism or Lutheranism or whatever it was. They just came in, in smaller numbers and tended to be along the fringes of the region. So there's something to be said for history and the survival of this legacy all the way into the 21st century. Now this, as you can see, is a, is a map from 2000. And if you're like me and you love maps with color on them, you'll love this map. It's one of the best ever. And this is, again, using what, what uh, religious statistics we have. And this is a map that shows county to county across the United States the single largest religious denomination in each county. And if you... Uh, if you're sitting on the back or you can't see that far, what is red? Right. This is the Baptist belt. And if you look at the, at the Baptist belt, that doesn't mean that a majority of the people who live in the red counties are Baptist. It just means that there are more Baptists than there are any other single group in those counties. And you can see that in the Ozarks of North Arkansas and Southern Missouri, uh, this is firmly within the Baptist belt. In this way, the Ozarks is, uh, is sort of an extension of the greater south. Of course, when we're looking at the red there, you're, you're looking at the south pretty much. A lot of that's the old confederacy. 
And so much of the Ozarks uh, is today dominated by Baptists, not Methodists. And there are any number of reasons why the Baptists have held on and expanded and the Methodists have actually contracted. Uh, we won't go into those in here. I do teach American religious history, so anyone who's interested in that one of these days, we can talk about that in there. But there are a couple of exceptions. If you look at the fringe counties along the Mississippi River and along the Missouri River, where there was heavy German settlement, they've got the light blue, and that's Catholic. So that means that Catholics make up the largest single group in some of these fringe counties along the, the northern and northeastern part of the Ozarks. Counties like uh, Gasconade and Osage, Franklin, uh, St. Jen, Perry, some of those counties up in there. And then there's this one yellow county right in the middle. Does anybody know what county that is? It's Ozark County. And Ozark County is yellow, which uh, says here yellow is Christian. So that means in Ozark County, almost all of the groups who fall into that category of Christian, it's not general Christian, but specifically the denomination that we talked about earlier uh, with the name Christian are going to be Church of Christ. So that just means there are lots of churches of Christ in Ozark County, and the people who are members of the Church of Christ are, uh, make up a larger population than any other single group, even counting Baptists. Now, there would be several other counties in this region where uh, the Christians would probably be a close second to Baptists, but that's the only county where they actually surpass the Baptists. 